Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. Chapter 1 The steel door slammed shut with a resounding clang that echoed through the dark corridors of Bell Rivet Penitentiary. Floyd Lawton, better known as the assassin Deadshot, didn't even flinch at the noise. He sat motionless on the dingy cot in his tiny cell, staring at the opposite wall. His one good eye was bloodshot from lack of sleep, but his mind was alert. Deadshot had been rotting in this hellhole for months now, ever since Batman had caught him during his last job in Gotham. The isolation was maddening, but Floyd could handle solitary confinement. It was the boredom that was slowly driving him mad. A man of action, like him needed a mission, a purpose. And locked in this cramped cell, he had none. Heavy footsteps approached his cell, and Floyd glanced up to see two armed guards outside. You've got a visitor, Lawton, up and at M. Floyd stood slowly, his joints creaking. He didn't get many visitors. In fact, in all his time here, he had gotten none. Who could it be? A potential client, maybe, looking to hire him once he got out? It seemed unlikely, but Floyd's curiosity was piqued. He allowed the guards to shackle his wrists and lead him down the hall into a small visitation room. Inside sat a stern-looking black woman in a neatly pressed pantsuit, studying him coolly as the guards sat him down across from her. Floyd Lawton, my name is Amanda Waller, she introduced herself crisply. I have a proposition for you. Floyd raised an eyebrow. This was no client. Lady, I've got a life sentence here. Unless you're offering a pardon, I don't think I can help you. Waller gave a thin smile. What if I said I could get you out of here? Not just a pardon, but a clean slate, all charges dropped, record wiped clean. Now she had his full attention. I'm listening. I represent a clandestine government organization called Task Force X. We specialize in utilizing imprisoned assets, individuals with special talents, people like you. Waller slid a file across the table. Floyd flipped through it. Surveillance photos, detailed dossiers on his skills and past missions, psyche vows, this lady had done her homework. Here's the deal, Waller continued. You join our squad, carry out the missions I assign, and if you survive, you walk free, so what do you say, Lawton? Are you interested in a shot at redemption, or would you prefer to grow old and die in this cage? Floyd leaned back, considering it. The mission parameters were vague, and he suspected the mortality rate was high for these clandestine ops. But the reward was undeniable. Freedom, a clean record, it was tempting as hell. When do I start, he asked. Waller smiled. Now, that's the spirit. She pushed a contract across the table and handed him a pen. Let's get this official. Floyd scrawled his signature on the dotted line. He had no idea what he was getting into with this Task Force X business. But one thing was certain, it beat the hell out of rotting away in this cell. Chapter 2 Dr. Harleen Quinzel, better known as the psychotic supervillain Harley Quinn, pressed her face against the bars of her cell in Arkham Asylum, giggling maniacally. Hey Bats, good to see ya, she called out to the costumed figure striding down the hall. Did you come to bust me out of this loony bin? Batman paused outside her cell, casting her a stern look. Not a chance, Harley. Harley stuck out her tongue petulantly. You're no fun anymore, B-Man, don't sure remember the good times we had? Your manipulation won't work on me, Batman growled. He continued down the hall to speak with Arkham's chief of psychiatry about increased security measures. 
Harley flopped down on her cot with a dramatic sigh. She'd hoped a personal appeal to her dear all pal bats would work. Seemed she was stuck here at Arkham. Again. She sat up suddenly, cocking her head. Were those gunshots she was hearing? And some screaming mixed with strange electronic sounds? An ear-splitting explosion rocked the building, blowing Harley's cell door clean off its hinges. She dove for cover, peering out cautiously through the smoke. A bulky figure entered through the shattered doorway, a man in mechanical armor with a cold metal helmet. Glowing eyes peered out as he leveled an assault rifle at her. Harley's eyes widened in delighted recognition. Oh, hey there, Tin Man. Fancy me you here. Deathstroke lowered his weapon. Let's go, clown girl. We've got two minutes before backup arrives. Harley skipped merrily after him. Where we headed, big guy? Joker sent you to pick Lil all me up? I just knew my pun wouldn't leave me here. Deathstroke stopped and grabbed her roughly by the shoulders. The Joker didn't send me my employer has plans for you. He glanced down the hall impatiently. Now are you coming or not? Harley blinked up at him in confusion, then broke into a sly grin. Oh, oh, sounds exciting. What are we waiting for? She let Deathstroke lead her out through the carnage and chaos, not caring where they ended up. Anywhere was better than this nuthouse. Chapter 3 George Digger Harkness, better known as the villain Captain Boomerang, shuffled down the dim prison corridor with his hands cuffed behind his back. The guards roughly shoved him into an empty visitation room, where a stern-looking woman sat waiting. Sit down, Mr. Harkness, she ordered curtly. My name is Amanda Waller. I'm here to make you a one-time offer. Digger collapsed into the chair. Piss off, lady. I've got 25 life in here. Nothing you can offer me. Waller slid a tablet across the table. Take a look at this. Despite himself, Digger glanced at the screen. Surveillance photos of his prior heists, detailed dossiers on his boomerang skills and escapades. This Waller chick had done her homework. All right, you've got my attention, Digger admitted. What's this about then? Waller smiled tightly. I'm assembling a team for an off-the-books mission, do your job right, and your prison sentence gets commuted, you walk free. Digger leaned forward, intrigued but skeptical. And if I refuse this mission of yours? Then you stay here and rot, Waller replied flatly. She slid a contract over to him. I'll need your signature. Digger chewed his lip, considering it. He'd be working for a shady government squad, no question. But a ticket out of this hellhole? That was worth something. He grabbed the pen and scrawled his name. Excellent, said Waller, gathering up the contract. Report to these coordinates in 24 hours. We'll provide transportation from there. She slid a slip of paper across the table, then departed. Digger pocketed the coordinates, puzzled but cautiously optimistic. Whatever mess he was getting into, it had to be better than wasting away in this cell. Twenty-four hours later, Digger stepped out of the black SUV at the mysterious rendezvous point, a run-down warehouse on the outskirts of town. He entered cautiously, whistling when he saw what awaited him. A massive glass tank stood inside the warehouse, thick metal panels reinforcing the walls. Inside, a pale humanoid figure with a gaping, toothy maw floated in the brackish water. Shark-like beady eyes followed Digger's every move. Beautiful, isn't he? said a voice. Digger turned to see Waller approaching, accompanied by armed guards. 
that's Waylon Jones, also known as Killer Croc, or as we've taken to calling him, King Shark. Digger shuddered. You don't say, and here I thought I'd seen it all. What'd you bring him aboard for? Muscle, obviously, Waller replied. Every team needs some, I trust you two will get acquainted on the flight over. She headed for the warehouse exit. Digger took one last uneasy glance at the floating killer mutant, then hurried after Waller. One thing was for sure, this team was shaping up to be an absolute circus. And he'd fit right in. Chapter 4 Floyd Lawton stepped off the helicopter transport into a secluded military base ringed by forests and cliffs. Amanda Waller was there to greet the newly formed Task Force X. Welcome to Spring Mills, she announced. This will be your home and training ground until it's time to deploy, report to the barracks, and get settled in. Training begins at 600 hours. With that, Waller departed leaving the ragtag group glancing around uncertainly. An eclectic bunch they were, the deadshot assassin, the baseball bat-wielding clown girl, the Aussie criminal boomerang expert, and a ten-foot mutated shark man. Well, this is cozy, Harley Quinn said brightly, skipping towards the Spartan barracks. It's just like summer camp, oh, I call top bunk. Floyd noticed Captain Boomerang eyeing King Shark uneasily. The walking tank hadn't said a word, simply staring around placidly with Black Doll's eyes. Right, said Digger. Well, I'm not sharing quarters with Jaws here, so one of you better volunteer. Floyd sighed, hefting his bag over his shoulder. I'll do it, doesn't bother me none. He had shared quarters with far worse in Afghanistan. At least the shark mutant was quiet. Digger looked relieved. Much obliged, mate. Come on then, darling. Let's go get settled. He headed after Harley. Floyd watched them go, then turned to King Shark towering silently behind him. Well then, shall we? King Shark didn't respond, merely blinking those lifeless eyes. Suppressing a shudder, Floyd turned and headed for the barracks. This was shaping up to be one hell of an unusual mission. The next morning's training proved grueling. Up before dawn, then hours of weapons drills, martial arts, survival skills and endurance conditioning. Floyd was accustomed to hard training, but the others struggled. Except King Shark, the hulking mutant took to the water, base training with ease, gliding through the facility's Olympic-sized pool, a perfect killing machine. By the end of each long day, the squad was battered and exhausted. Mealtimes were consumed in weary silence. But gradually, they were transforming into a cohesive unit, disparate and strange, but with Waller's firm hand, slowly being forged into a team. After one month of intense training, Waller finally gave them their mission, take down Brainiac and his invading army before he digitized the entire planet. To do so, they'd need to fight their way through the occupied cities and free the brainwashed Justice League from the aliens' control. It was a suicide mission, and they all knew it. But it was also a shot at freedom from their prisons, for those who somehow survived. As the squad did final weapons checks, and boarded the transport bound for war-torn metropolis, Floyd felt the slightest camaraderie with these fellow freaks and killers. This was still likely a one-way ticket, but if so, they'd give the invaders hell before the end. Chapter 5 The transport helicopter descended toward the ravaged streets of Metropolis, weaving between smoldering skyscrapers. Down below, the extent of the devastation became clear. 
aliens patrolled in hovering pods while human prisoners were herded into cages. Brainiac's forces had claimed the city. Damn, will you look at this place? Harley exclaimed, peering out the window. And here I thought Gotham was a dump. Deadshot checked his wrist magnums grimly while Captain Boomerang fidgeted with a razor boomerang. King Shark bared his fangs, growling softly. The helicopter touched down in a relatively abandoned industrial area. This is your stop, the pilot announced. Good luck, you're gonna need it. The squad members dropped one by one onto the debris-strewn street. They scanned the bombed-out buildings warily, weapons ready. All seemed quiet, but it was only a matter of time before the enemy came to investigate the landing craft. Amanda Waller's voice crackled over their earpieces. Make your way downtown and rendezvous with the local resistance forces. They'll help you access restricted areas and acquire intel on Brainiac's occupying forces. You heard her, let's move out, ordered Deadshot. Keeping to the shadows, they skulked through the twisted wreckage of the inner city, the lights of Brainiac's mothership hovering ominously in the distance. Rounding a corner, Deadshot held up a closed fist, signaling the group to halt. Down the block floated a pair of otherworldly drones, emitting an eerie blue glow. The squad docked behind cover, holding their breath. After an agonizing moment, the drones continued on their way. Deadshot let out a tense breath and pointed across the street toward an old theater, their destination. The resistance was holed up here. With the coast clear for now, the squad hurried inside, ready to join the fight. The battle for Metropolis had only just begun. Chapter 6 Inside the dilapidated theater, the ragtag resistance fighters greeted the squad with palpable relief. These civilians were in over their heads fighting Brainiac's forces. They needed experts like Deadshot and his team. Glad you folks could join us, said the resistance leader, a weary man named Ja. We've been barricaded here, launching what raids we can, but Brainiac's grip tightens by the hour. From the stage, he showed them a map of the city grid, pointing out the key strongholds Brainiac had established. Here, here, and here, John indicated. Take them out, and we can disrupt his operations. Deadshot nodded. Any intel on these targets? John shook his head grimly. We've got limited recon, you'll be going in blind. Lovely, muttered Boomerang. Just point us where he hit me. The squad spent the next hour gearing up and preparing their attack strategy. It would be a surgical strike down three separate boulevards to hit the alien strongholds simultaneously. With their powers combined, they hoped to catch the enemy off guard. Night fell, and the squad slipped into the gloom. Making their way stealthily through back alleys, they reached the agreed starting point. Deadshot nodded, and each member peeled off toward their target. Harley reached hers first, an old city archives building crawling with patrolling drones. With a gleeful cackle, she burst through the window, bat swinging. The drones swiveled toward her, blaster arms charging up with a high-pitched whine. Eat this, ye ugly tin cans. Harley hollered, lobbing grenades with wild abandon. The building erupted into caustic explosions as she dove for cover whooping maniacally. The alien drones didn't stand a chance against her chaotic assault. Across the city, the rest of the squad similarly caught the aliens off guard, blasting and slicing through their defenses. The surprise attacks left Brainiac's forces in disarray, a clear path now opened into the city center. Phase one was complete. 
The squad rendezvoused, dusty and bruised but victorious. Yet they knew this was just the opening salvo. The real battle for Metropolis had only begun. Chapter 7 The squad regrouped back at the Resistance hideout after their successful strikes. But Deadshot felt uneasy. That had been too easy, almost like those alien outposts were left lightly guarded on purpose. Were they walking into a trap? His suspicions were interrupted by an unfamiliar voice emanating from their earpieces. Waller's frequency had been hacked. Impressive work out there, Task Force X. You've got Brainiac nervous now. The voice was polished and vaguely contemptuous. Dead shots, I narrow. Identify yourself, how'd you access our comm channel? My name is Lex Luthor. I have resources and tech at my disposal you can't begin to imagine. Ah geez, not this blowhard, muttered Harley. Deadshot activated his mic again. What do you want, Luther? To propose an alliance, my forces have been battling Brainiac's army for weeks now with minimal success, as I'm sure you've noticed, but together we might just stand a chance. Deadshot considered it. They did need reinforcements, and Luther likely had intel on Brainiac's full invasion plan. But allying with him was dangerous. Captain Boomerang shook his head vehemently. Don't trust a word this bastard says. He'd sell us out quicker than a dingo eats a baby. Charming, Mr. Harkness, came Luther's dry response over comms. But I'm afraid you don't have the luxury of refusing my help. Unless you'd rather Brainiac raise the planet to ashes, I await your response. The calm line went dead. Deadshot paced, weighing their options. Luther was a snake, but Boomerang was right too, they were outgunned. They needed reinforcements to take down both the alien fleet and the brainwashed Justice League. I don't like it either, he finally said. But we need access to Luther's resources if we're gonna win this. Boomerang scowled, but reluctantly nodded. The others likewise signaled their agreement. They were in no position to refuse aid. Deadshot reopened the line. Luther, you've got a deal. Send us the rendezvous coordinates and we'll discuss terms. Luther's oily voice returned. Excellent decision. My driver will pick you up shortly come unarmed. Don't keep me waiting. As he signed off, Deadshot hoped he hadn't just signed their death warrants by buying into Luther's deal. They needed the firepower, but the ego-driven industrialist was not to be trusted. Yet they had little choice with the Earth's very survival at stake. Uneasily, they set out into the night toward Luther's stronghold. The enemy of thy enemy was not always a friend. Chapter 8 Luther's armored limo transported the squad safely to his fortified skyscraper headquarters. But as they approached the building, King Shark suddenly growled and smashed through the roof, bounding away into the chaos of the streets. A hell, looks like Jaws caught a scent, yelled Boomerang. I knew we shouldn't have trusted that freak. Deadshot shook his head. We don't have time to chase him we proceed as planned. They met Luffer in his pristine office, atop the Lex Corp Tower. He eyed them imperiously from behind a massive glass desk. Charmed to make your acquaintance, he said wryly. We have much to discuss about Brainiac's vulnerabilities and how our forces might come by. Yeah, yeah, skip the corporate spiel, said Harley. What do you got on Big Bad Brainy? Luther's eye twitched in annoyance, but he turned to a monitor. Diagrams and alien schematics filled the large screen. As you can see, 
the majority of Brainiac's firepower comes from his large-scale CPU units, Luffer lectured. Take them down and... Alarms suddenly blared. The view screens flashed to live security footage of a woman in a leafy bodysuit tearing through Luther's lobby defenses. Vines and overgrown plants trailed in her wake as Luther's robots sparked and collapsed around her. Ivy, shouted Harley excitedly. Turning to the squad, she added, looks like this party just got crashed by an old pal of mine. Luther scowled. It seems we have a pest problem. He entered a command, deploying more security mechs. If we could focus on the planetary invasion currently underway. Yeah, yeah, send in the toys, laughed Harley, unslinging her bat. Just like old times. Led by Harley, the squad leapt into the elevator, riding it down to assist Poison Ivy in her chaotic assault on Luther's stronghold. So much for their alliance, it looks like they'd be battling both Brainiac and Luther's forces now. Chapter 9 Poison Ivy's attack kept Luther's security forces occupied, allowing the squad to slip away undetected into the ravaged metropolis streets. Luther would be on their tail now, but staying put was not an option either. Let's get back to the resistance base suggested Deadshot. Regroup there and... A streak of red blurred past them, nearly knocking Harley from her feet. It doubled back, revealing the Scarlet Speedster himself, the Flash. They didn't mention we'd be tangling with the spandex crowd, grumbled Boomerang, readying his weapons. The Flash glared at them, eyes glowing in eerie green, Surrender, criminals, by order of Brainiac, you will be digitized on sight. Talk about a blank slate. Deadshot raised his wrist magnums. Remember, these League heroes are under alien control. Use non-lethal force only. Harley giggled. No promises. She launched herself at flash feet first to bowl him over. But the speedster dodged nimbly aside, racing circles around the chaotic brawlers. King Shark crashed onto the scene in the nick of time, swiping Flash out of the air mid-sprint. As the speedster tumbled away, a batarang whistled through the air, embedding itself in King Shark's dorsal fin. Batman dropped from a fire escape to join the fray. It was a brutal battle but the squad managed to overpower the brainwashed heroes through coordinated hits. Once subdued, Deadshot administered tranquilizer doses measured to keep them sedated. The priority was freeing them, not punishment. Harley helped load the two unconscious League members into a stolen armored truck. Bats and flash down for the Count, who's up next on the menu. Deadshot checked the holo display on his wrist. Their next targets awaited, Superman and Wonder Woman themselves. Chapter 10 With Flash and Batman contained at the Resistance hideout, the squad turned their focus to the remaining League powerhouses under Brainiac's control, Superman and Wonder Woman. Luther had provided intel on both heroes' weaknesses that Deadshot hoped they wouldn't need to exploit. But if it came down to their lives or his teens, he'd do what was needed. The squad tracked the two heavy hitters to downtown Metropolis. Sure enough, Wonder Woman soon descended from the smoke-filled skies to confront them, sword drawn. Last chance to surrender villains, she declared. Her lasso glowed gold, primed to ensnare them. Dids on taking down Wonder Bread, laughed Harley, producing an oversized mallet that inexplicably sparked with electricity. As those two tangled, Deadshot spotted a streak of red cape diving toward them. Incoming, he warned Boomerang and King Shark. 
Give him everything you've got. Superman slammed into them like a freight train, even as Deadshot unloaded his wrist magnums on full auto. The Kryptonian didn't even flinch, swatting them aside contemptuously. King Shark lunged forward, sinking his teeth into Superman's shoulder, thrashing violently. Superman roared, eyes flaring heat vision beams as he fought to dislodge the mutant shark. Keep him busy, Deadshot yelled. If they could weaken the hero enough, Boomerang could deploy the kryptonite provided by Luther. Wonder Woman and Harley were locked in a vicious duel nearby, trading punishing blows as Harley cackled with glee. But finally, a brutal shield bash sent Harley skidding away, dazed. Things looked dire. They needed to end this battle quickly before the squad was ripped apart. On Deadshot's signal, Boomerang let fly the sickly green kryptonite Boomerang. It was a desperate gambit, but their last option. The glowing projectile sliced through the air, finding its mark. Superman cried out in sudden agony, dropping to one knee as the radiation sapped his strength. Pressing their advantage, the squad closed in for the final blow. Chapter 11 Superman and Wonder Woman were contained, leaving just one final League member under Brainiac's sway, Batman. After an exhausting battle, Deadshot's team regrouped to plan their assault on Gotham to capture the caped crusader. They expected stiff resistance entering Batman's home turf. The Dark Knight would be lying in wait, with all of his tools and tricks at the ready. They had to be strategic about this. We need to sneak into Gotham, slip past his perimeter defenses and surveillance, said Deadshot, studying a map. Once inside the city, we... His calm crackled to life, an open channel broadcast of the smooth, talking Lex Luthor. Hello, Task Force X. I couldn't help overhearing your plans. Ugh, this guy again, grumbled Harley. Luther continued, As a gift to solve past wounds between us, allow me to provide you secure transportation directly into Gotham, as well as information on disabling Batman's cave defenses. Deadshot hesitated. Another deal with the devil. But Luther was right. With his help, they stood a better chance of capturing Batman quickly and quietly. Data received, Luther suddenly said. Driver Ian Root, do try and be discreet. I'd rather not have Gotham leveled before my next shareholders meeting. The line went dead. Uneasily, Deadshot turned to the squad. Guess we ride with Luther again. Stay sharp. Batman would be ready and watching. But with Luther's intel, they hoped to catch him off guard for once. The stealth vehicle deposited the squad just outside Gotham. They crept along the city outskirts, avoiding patrols. Approaching the cliffs outside town, Deadshot scanned with infrared, locating a cleverly concealed entrance to the Batcave. Luther's codes let them slip past security unnoticed. Quiet as ghosts, the Suicide Squad descended into the heart of the Batman's lair. It was time to spring the trap on Gotham's shadowy protector. Chapter 12 Creeping through the dark halls of the Batcave, the squad closed in on Batman's location, ready to ambush the brainwashed hero. But they realized too late it was a trap. A bellowing figure charged from the shadows, knocking Boomerang flat. The hulking monster was Bane, but massively mutated, eyes glowing alien green, veins bulging with a neon liquid. You have come to your doom, fools, the mutated Bane roared. He grabbed Deadshot in a crushing bear hug. 
wrist magnums strained uselessly against the behemoth's thick hide. Harley flipped over Bane's head, smashing her bat across his shoulders. He staggered, but barely noticed the blows raining down. King Shark managed to sink his teeth into Bane's bulging arm. But Bane merely laughed and smashed the shark man to the floor. He then hurled Deadshot bodily into Harley, sending them both crashing into a display case. Captain Boomerang scouted the environment for anything he could weaponize while the others distracted Bane. Spotting a rack of experimental weapons, he grabbed an oversized freeze ray and took aim. The blue beam encapsulated Bane in a thick crust of ice. He struggled futilely against the frozen cocoon, roaring muffled threats. I'll hold him, muttered Boomerang. Where the hell is Batman? At the shriek of a police siren, the Dark Knight swooped from the ceiling to descend upon them. His cape dispensed a blinding smoke as he engaged them. The squad battled fiercely in the haze against their brainwashed foe. But Batman's home turf advantage was too much. Everything went black as Deadshot felt an electric jolt. When he came to, they were all trapped in holding cells at the mercy of Brainiac's pawns. Chapter 13 Wakey wakey, boys and girls. Harley's shrill voice roused Deadshot from unconsciousness. Leerily, he took in their surroundings, a bizarre, angular holding cell glowing with alien tech. Seeing him stir, Harley pressed against the orange energy barrier containing them. We got nabbed by the baddies, but don't worry. I think they took one too many knocks to the head. Sure enough, glancing over Deadshot spotted Batman slumped in the corner, looking dazed. And Bane was gone. What is this place? Some kind of mothership? Asked Boomerang, testing the cell boundaries. Deadshot's wrist display, still active, showed strange energy readings, consistent with transdimensional travel. I think we're in a parallel dimension, he realized aloud. Batman stirred, looking at them in confusion. Where am I? What's happening? He seemed back to normal. How much do you remember? Questioned Deadshot. The Cape Crusader's intel could prove useful. Images like waking from a nightmare, Batman replied cryptically. Metropolis in ruins. He studied the alien architecture surrounding them. Some kind of portal technology brought us here, I believe. Deadshot nodded. Brainiac's been jumping dimensions. We need to trace the energy signature back to the source earth and stop him there. Can you operate this tech? I can try, said Batman. He moved to examine the angular control panels lining the walls. King Shark burst through the cell's energy barrier suddenly, freeing them. The mutated Bane must have been this world's version. Batman keyed in alien coordinates. With a flash, a swirling portal opened. This will take us back, but let's move, ordered Deadshot. One by one, the suicide squad slipped between dimensions, en route to Brainiac's home base. Chapter 14 The squad spilled out of the portal into a war ravaged cityscape that looked much like the metropolis they knew. But small differences made it clear they were in another alternate universe. Oily black rain poured from the sky. Monuments and billboards featured their villainous doppelgangers. And hovering overhead was not Brainiac's skull ship, but an Imperial Palace spaceship belonging to ruthless dictator Superman. So this ain't the right Earth, said Harley, skipping through oily puddles. She stopped to examine a poster of The Jester, 
herself as a clown-themed terrorist waging guerrilla warfare on Superman's regime. Kinda dig in this place, though. Deadshot checked the scanner built into his eyepiece, tracking dimensional energies. We're close. The epicenter is that way. He pointed toward the looming palace. Wait, we're going further into this freak show? Asked Boomerang incredulously. Batman's eyes narrowed. We need to reach the source. Let's move before. Suddenly, armored guards dropped around them, led by a goatee green arrow shouting, Halt, criminals. Harley giggled. Goatees means evil twins get em. She tackled the fascistic green arrow while dead shot, and the others battled back their photon rifle-wielding counterparts. Fighting through the guards, they escaped into a sewer access tunnel. Boomerang shook his head in disgust. Parallels worlds give me the creeps. Are we done hopping dimensions yet? Deadshot almost sympathize. But they needed to follow the trail a bit further. One more jump, he said. Stay ready. Activating the wrist tracer again, he located the epicenter and opened another swirling portal. With deep unease, the squad left the nightmarish alternate world behind, hoping the next was their last stop. Chapter 15 The squad emerged in yet another parallel dimension, and were greeted by desolation. The city was a bombed-out ruin, broken buildings stretching to the horizon. The sky glowed blood-red, though there was no sun. This must be the Earth Brainiac decimated before moving on, said Batman grimly. He pointed to a collapsed skyscraper, Wayne Tower. My counterpart is either dead or digitized in this world. So where to now? asked Boomerang nervously. He kept glancing around like he expected demon versions of themselves to leap out at any moment. Deadshot checked his wrist display. The energy signature was off the charts here. Brainiac's portal nexus can't be far. He nodded toward a flickering light on the horizon. There. They approached cautiously, weapons raised. But the building appeared abandoned, door blasted open. Inside was a massive, intricate machine, glowing with alien glyphs, a cross-dimensional portal hub. Jackpot, muttered Deadshot. This tech could be useful. While Batman studied the controls, Deadshot accessed a console showing various camera feeds. He toggled through images of decimated cities in dozens of worlds. Wait, stop there, said Harley suddenly. The monitor showed gleaming towers and figures flying about shooting energy beams. What kind of crazy world is that? She leaned closer, entranced. Looks pacified, probably one of Brainiac's completed collection worlds, Deadshot guessed grimly. Harley grinned. Yeah, but it looks like fun. Can we go there real quick? I want to ride a unicorn. Deadshot sighed. He supposed a quick detour couldn't hurt, and the portal tech here could prove useful. Fine, Batman, set coordinates for. Chapter 16 The squad stepped cautiously from the portal into the vibrant alien cityscape. The skyline was dominated by crystalline towers that hummed with energy. Silver spires stretched to the heavens. No signs of battle damage, noted Batman. This world is intact. Intact and mighty boring, grumbled Harley. Where's all the laser shootouts and stuff? Deadshot's scanner began pinging wildly. We've got incoming. It looks like the welcoming party noticed us. Swarms of golden drones poured from the towers, encircling them. A booming, amplified voice spoke, 
dimension travelers, you will be cataloged and digitized. The drones began scanning them with red beams. Take cover, shouted Deadshot. The squad scrambled for cover, returning fire on the drones. But for every one blown apart, two more took its place. These tin cans just keep coming, yelled Boomerang over the laser barrage. We're gonna get overwhelmed. As if on cue, the heavens opened up, but rather than reinforcements, out poured dozens of brainiacs. The Colwyn invaders descended on the city, blasting drones and buildings alike with skull beam weaponry. Fight or be deleted, the Brainiacs droned mechanically. Batman's eyes narrowed beneath his cowl. A Brainiac civil war, they're turning on each other, now's our chance. The squad fought their way through the chaos toward the central citadel. If they could take command of the mainframe, they could broadcast a shutdown code and cripple the Brainiac duplicates. But guarding the Citadel stood the Prime Brainiac, colossal and glowing with power. His tendrils lashed out, grabbing Boomerang and Harley and assimilating them instantly into his being. No, shouted Deadshot. He opened fire with wrist magnums. King Shark snarled and charged forward. Batman flung batarangs. But none could stop the Prime Brainiac's approach. As Doom Loon, Deadshot closed his eye, focusing his mind like before every perfect shot, clear out all distraction, breathe in, and fire. The wrist magnum payload exploded in Brainiac's armored skull. Cracks formed, widened, and the Colossus toppled. The remaining Brainiacs froze, then went inert. Batman wasted no time initiating the mass shutdown code. Across the city, Brainiacs fell lifeless. The invasion was over. Now they just had to hope there were enough pieces left of their friends to reconstitute. Chapter 17 the battered but triumphant squad finally stood at the threshold of victory against Brainiac. After battling through dozens of alternate worlds, they had arrived back in their home dimension, the Earth Prime, where one final version of Brainiac awaited. The combined technology and knowledge they had acquired from the parallel worlds had prepared them for this moment. Now it was time to take the fight directly to the source and end this once and for all. Suiting up aboard the Resistance airship, Deadshot mentally prepared for the battle ahead. So many had been lost or digitized already. Failure here would mean the fall of this entire Earth. Harley bounced on her heels nearby, revving up her souped-up alien mallet, this is going to be one for the highlight reel. Deadshot nodded solemnly. It was time. Let's finish this. The airship rose from its camouflaged ravine base, speeding towards Metropolis. In the distance, Brainiac's massive skull ship loomed, engulfing the city in its cold shadow. It would strike fast and hard, beaming aboard directly into the ship's nerve center to take Brainiac by surprise. With luck, they could destabilize the ship's core reactors and escape before detonation. Ready in three, two, one, Mark, shouted Deadshot. In a flash, the teleporters activated, warping them straight into the heart of the enemy mothership. Immediately, laser turrets swiveled to target them. Go, go, go! Deadshot yelled over the sudden din of alarms. The squad split up, fighting their way through the alien ship toward the reactor room. Deadshot blasted through the final defenses and began priming the core for meltdown. Charge is set. We have five minutes to clear out. Move. Just then, the ship walls buckled and split. A colossal figure smashed through a brainiac himself. Fools, this vessel, 
and your entire planet belongs to me. It was a brutal clash, but the squad managed to overpower the alien tyrant with their exotic arsenal. I will return. Brainiac vowed ominously as the mothership exploded around them. Being to safety just in time, the suicide squad turned to see Brainiac's ship light up the sky in a violent display as it disintegrated completely. They had done it, it defeated the last Brainiac and saved their Earth. But Brainiac's parting words lingered. Had they truly seen the last of him? Only time would tell. For now, though, they had earned their victory and their planet's salvation against impossible odds. The Suicide Squad stood proudly together, survivors and heroes of a monumental battle. Chapter 18 Battered but triumphant, the remaining squad members materialized back at their home base. They had barely a moment to catch their breath before Amanda Waller strode in, flanked by armed guards. Report, she ordered curtly. Is Brainiac destroyed? Deadshot stepped forward. The last Brainiac has been eliminated. His army dismantled across all known dimensions. Waller seemed to relax slightly. She turned her piercing gaze over each of them. Well done securing the planet's safety, your service will not be forgotten. It was as close to praise as Waller would give. She nodded to the guards. Escort them to the medical wing, then we'll debrief. After quick patching up, the squad assembled in the base's sterile briefing room. Waller entered carrying dossiers. While you were pursuing Brainiac across the multiverse, we were handling complications back home, she announced. Waller slid a photo of Lex Luthor across the table. Luthor has gone underground since your unsanctioned assault. His vendetta will have consequences. She then passed an image of a pensive Batman. Kotham's Dark Knight seems torn between justice and loyalty after your extraction. He will be an uncertain ally going forward. Finally, she showed an imperious Superman mid-speech. The League are emboldened after being freed from alien control. They will demand oversight now. Waller clasped her hands behind her back. In the wake of crisis, the world's power structures are realigning. We must adapt to survive. She eyed the squad members. I still foresee a need for operatives with your unique capabilities. If you wish it, there is a place for you here. Deadshot leaned forward. You're offering to keep the team together? On my terms, yes, Waller replied. There are shadow wars still to fight as new threats arise. Deadshot glanced at Harley, Boomerang, and King Shark in turn. Together they had achieved the impossible against Brainiac. United, they had value. Seeing no objections, he turned back to Waller. What's our first mission? She almost smiled. I'll provide mission details once you've recovered. Dismissed for now, you've earned reprieve. As the newly forged team departed the briefing room, the promise of further action excited them. The Suicide Squad stood ready to defend their world again when called upon. For Deadshot, that call gave him purpose. For Harley, a chance to unleash chaos. For Boomerang, battles to win and fortunes to build. And for King Shark, an outlet for his primal fury. United by darkness, they would meet the light when it encroached too bright. Such was the Suicide Squad, for as long as Waller required. Chapter 19 In the aftermath of the Brainiac invasion, Amanda Waller kept her word and granted the surviving Suicide Squad members conditional pardons. 
but free from incarceration, each went their own way. Floyd Lawton Acca Deadshot, a given a clean slate Floyd returned home to reconnect with his daughter Zoe. Retirement never stuck for the jaded assassin, however. He soon took work as a bodyguard for hire. Harley Quinn, a Dr. Harleen Quinzel's short freedom ended abruptly when Batman apprehended her during an attempted museum heist. Deemed irredeemable, she was transferred to Ultramax Arkham Asylum. Captain Boomerang, Digger Harkness, used his pardon to start over in Coast City. But unable to go straight, he joined up with a new version of the rogue's Flash villain team. King Sharka, the mutated Waylon Jones returned briefly to his former identity as enforcer for the Court of Crime family. But uncontrollable, he was banished to Monster Island Prison. Rick Flagg, Flagg remained loyal to Waller's clandestine task force X operations. He continued leading Black Ops field teams of expendable criminals press ganged into service. Amanda Waller, ever the political survivor, Waller leveraged the squad's successes to expand her shadowy programs. Her ruthless tactics and unchecked power only grew from there. And so the brief tale of the Suicide Squad ended. Redemption lay beyond most of its members. But for a fleeting time, they had come together and achieved the extraordinary against all odds. That would have to suffice. For now, the world was safe once more, until the next threat inevitably emerged. And Waller would be there, ready to forge her weapon again. Chapter 20 Months after Brainiac's defeat, Deadshot stood atop a Gotham rooftop, scanning the skyline through his sniper scope. Tonight was just bodyguard work, a low risk. He needed the money, but couldn't help feeling hollow. Retirement hadn't stuck. Neither had going straight. He was a weapon in search of a target. Rappling up from the shadows came a familiar figure. Speak of the devil. What do you want, Waller? Deadshot asked without lowering his scope. The world needs you again, Lawton. Waller passed him a tablet showing news reports on bizarre creature attacks. Something is stern, something big. Deadshot was silent, continuing his rooftop sweep. I'm reactivating the squad, Waller pressed. Boomerang and Croc are already on board. That got Deadshot's attention. He lowered the scope and turned to face her. I figured we'd seen the last of each other after Brainiac went down. Waller's face was grave. I hoped so too, but evil doesn't rest, and neither can we. She extended a dossier folder. The creatures are appearing globally out of nowhere, laying waste to cities, it's random, unprecedented. And you need a suicide squad to figure out why, Deadshot finished. He took the folder, scanning the contents. Final payday or certain death? Not great options. But like Waller said, evil didn't rest and Deadshot wasn't done fighting it. He snapped the dossier shut. When do we start? The end. 